But also, so had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of them. They did not know that it was through death Satan would be disarmed. It was through death the power of the devil will be broken. The death of Jesus will be the bruising of the end of the devil. They did not know. They thought that the, de- the, the bruising of the head would be the killing of the devil, would be the, would be the cutting of his head. No. The death of Jesus will be the bruising of the head of the devil. Look at that. So, how did Jesus conquer the devil? No, we sing song and we say, Victory, victory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Victory, victory, hallelujah. Jesus conquered the devil. Pata, pata. Some people have turn this. Jesus conquered the devil. Macha, macha. So, <laughs> so, in their hearts, they feel that Jesus conquered Satan by stepping on his head, breaking his, his skull, stabbing him with sword. No. How did Jesus conquer the devil? By surrendering himself over to death. When Jesus died, when Jesus died, that was the defeat of Satan. Satan kept capturing men until he captured a man. So, Jesus was under Satan's dominion. And that was what made the cross happen. Hallelujah. He was under Satan's dominion. He said, this is your hour. And the authority of darkness. This is your hour and the authority of darkness. So, for a moment, Jesus was under, what well, he became a captive of the mighty. Yeah, that's correct. But you see, what the mighty did not know was that the Jesus that was the captive of the mighty was how God was going to contend with the one that contended with humanity. While Satan was lording and killing and putting the nails and the crown of thorns, God was fighting the devil by that act of the sacrifice of Jesus. That's why when he rose from the dead, that statement, all hail. <laughs> is an exclamation of victory. Is a trumpet sound of triumph. Hallelujah. Mm. Before the cross, in the realm of spiritual death, the ruler was Satan. So what was happening? Jesus would enter into spiritual death (laughs) and expire it. So how did Satan lose his authority? He captured God. You know, he captured God. And this, this runs riot with the Way the human mind thinks. One lovely pastor will say that the brain freezes at the thoughts of the wisdom of God. See, it's, it freezes the brain to think that the Almighty surrendered himself to be killed by man. <laughs> I mean, he entered into the captivity where his loved ones were held. 
and he allowed the taskmaster to capture him. I mean, Satan captured God. But Satan beats beyond what he could chew. He captured God and that was his undoing. Look at Colossians chapter 2. Verse 11. In him, or in whom, also, you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision, or that there's a death of Christ. The word circumcision was used as a figure. So, verse 12 says, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the oppression of God who have raised him from the dead. Verse 13, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh had he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses. Verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us and he took it out of the way nailing it towards to his cross. Having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. So how did Jesus triumph over the devil? On the cross. Jesus did not fight any uh, Chinese fights, I mean, what, sword fights in hell, like some people suggest. No, the victory over the devil was effected in the death on the cross. And the death on the cross. So, because of the death of Jesus, I have victory over Satan. You can repeat that with me. Because of the death of Jesus, I have victory over Satan. So, I am not trying to have victory. I am not fighting to have victory I am fighting from victory. So basically, the fighting of the believer is a fighting in his mind. It's a fight to stand conscious that Christ has given us the victory. Hallelujah. So because of the death of Jesus... We have been freed from Satan. And because of the death of Jesus and his resurrection, obviously, we have now been reconciled to God. That which happened in the Garden of Eden has been cancelled on the cross of Calvary. I repeat that again. That which happened in the Garden of Eden has been cancelled at on the cross of Calvary. Can we read verse 8 of Romans chapter 5? But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more. Being then justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement, or the word reconciliation. So what we have today is not separation from God. What we have today is reconciliation. Man has been reconciled to God by the death of Jesus. 
So people, for example, pray today saying, Lord, is there, is there anything separating between me and God? Anything, any sin, knowingly or knowingly, sin of omission, sin of commission? You see, that thing that you are talking about has been taken away by the sacrifice of Jesus. Hear that very well. That separation between God and man has been what? Taken away. This is what reconciliation is. The dividing factor, the separating issue has been set aside. And this was done by the death of Jesus. So the death of Jesus put spiritual death to death. Rendered it inoperative. No man today, listen to this again, no man today legally is spiritually dead. Because spiritual death has been taken away. Spiritual death has been what? Taken away. What we have today, what is existing today, based on the death of Jesus, is reconciliation. Is what? Reconciliation. When we go to preach the gospel, we are to herald the good news of Jesus Christ. That his death and his resurrection has brought reconciliation for humanity. Hence, Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses again to them. Since he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. The word of reconciliation. So what do we do today? We, we have on our lips the message of reconciliation, not the message of condemnation. In the preaching of the, the, of the believer today, what we provide to men is the message of reconciliation. That God has effected reconciliation. That the separation has been destroyed. That the one with the power of death is Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. We trust you were blessed by the teaching. For further inquiries about learning Christ with Pastor Temidayo Jolayemi, do well to drop us a mail on Church at gmail.com. We will be glad to answer your questions. Till the next broadcast, we see Jesus.